Coalition of St. Croix presents Silence Speaks, Secrets Revealed, a radio drama about child sexual abuse. It contains subject matter that may be triggering for survivors. Discretion is advised. the arrest of Stephen Paul Gaudet. What for? This is insane! For the assault of a minor, 15 and under. This is a mistake! This is no mistake. Understand, however, that anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I don't understand, Laura. I... I, I don't understand. You know, I... Oh, Stephen! Get my lawyer. You... What did you do? What will happen to us? I gave the tapes Dad and me to Dr. Dennis. I found them and gave them to her. Because she wouldn't do anything. And Sarah. Sarah? I guess I was getting too old for him. Sarah? Auntie Lara is coming for us. I called her. I told her everything. And she believed me. She said he'd done the same thing to a cousin years ago. What will I do? What will I do? What will I do now? To understand how a mother could allow such a thing to happen to her daughters, you would have to understand the fear in this home. Lara suffers on many levels. When her husband went for her daughter, he did not hit Lara. So she saw and didn't see. She is crippled by inertia. The girls are fortunate to have an aunt that took them out of a most dysfunctional home. Sometimes a family member needs to step in to help suffering children. Are you that family member? Thank you for listening to Silent Speaks Secrets Revealed. If you or someone you know has been sexually abused, please dial 911 in an emergency or call the Women's Coalition at 340-773-9272 to find out how you can end child sexual abuse. Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to the After Show Let's Talk About It, a live call-in talk show to continue discussing the weekly episodes of Silent Speaks, Secrets Revealed, a radio drama about child sexual abuse, presented by the Women's Coalition of St. Croix. The stories are fiction based on fact. If you would like to send a question or comment and you're not comfortable with your voice being on air or would like to remain anonymous, please send us a private message on Facebook at m.me slash wcstx. That's m.me slash WCSTX. I'm your host, and with us today we have HSI agents Eugene Thomas and Dennis Carter. It's a call-in show. The number to call in is 773-3636. That's 773-FM-FM. January is National Stalking Awareness Month, and it's also National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So we've been doing the Blue Heart all year, all month. Yellow is the awareness color for stalking, and blue for human trafficking. Next month, February, is Teen Dating Awareness Month. We'll talk about that afterwards. So thank you so much for coming and being with us. And yes, we've had many requests about getting the federal people in here about what they can do. So we're going to have them here. So welcome, 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 Agent Thomas and Agent Carter. Thank you for welcoming us, uh, Shalene Gums. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you throughout the years and it's uh, my first time in the studio so I want to say uh, hi to the uh, listening audience and I have here with me Special Agent Dennis Carter so I'll have him introduce himself. Hi uh, Special Agent Dennis Carter with uh, Homeland Security. Um, I've been with the agency approximately 17 years. Uh, i like to uh, thank Shaleen Gums for bringing us to, uh, to this forum. Uh, in the past, we've been reaching out to the schools. However, uh, this is a big audience for us, and we'd like to take your questions whenever you can. Awesome. So, the question everybody is asking, and I'm going to ask you to clarify for us, because I tried to do it, I failed miserably. So, um, is what is the federal nexus? Because we hear that everybody's like, well, why don't the federal agents just take, don't they just take over the cases? So, can you explain, either one of you, um, how is it? How is it that the federal agents become involved? 
what is the the connect that you have and how can you help uh, the connect that we have is uh, we enforce the US customs laws of the United States and a lot of these violation crosses uh, into interstate commerce and also crosses into the customs border territory of the uh, United States. So we have jurisdiction as it relates to uh, that nexus. All right, so there you have it. Once it does something that come across and the easiest way for that to happen is where I know that Agent Carter does a lot of work. One of the things that we talked about in the episode and that's digital, anything technological. That's correct. Um, several of the cases that we had uh, stem from photographs or videos that were taken. And to create the nexus, basically the devices are what we consider crossing interstate commerce or affecting interstate commerce. So from that point of view, we can get involved. However, we're not just limited to federal cases. We also assist the locals whenever they need uh, phones or devices dumped. We assist because basically I'm the only computer forensic agent on both islands. So wow. whenever they need something done, they can come to us. All right. So I want you all to talk before we get into the other part. I want you to talk a little bit about the stuff that you do too, because I know that you all have the blue campaign and you all talk about human trafficking a little bit. So tell us a little bit about what your agency does in terms of outreach, because a lot of that is involved in what child sexual abuse takes care of. Most of your cases too, well a lot of the cases, well those that I've worked with you on at least, have to do with children and sexual assault. Yes, uh, we, our agency launched the Project I Guardian program and that is a nationwide program where we go out to the schools and we speak to the kids on the importance of internet safety. Um, that is one of the areas that we feel uh, we, we can't arrest our way out of these, uh, these crimes. Uh, the agency itself, uh, Homeland Security Investigations, we uh, investigated 4, 000, uh, approximately 4,000 cases last year and expended uh, approximately 1 million hours as it relates to child exploitation. And you know, the, the, the numbers are just astronomical, but when you look at uh, how can we be more effective is by going out and speaking to the, 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 the kids, the students, and to the community as we are doing now to let the parents know the importance of monitoring your kids uh, in, uh, on the, while they're on the internet and uh, being very in involved in uh, their computer use or those handheld devices that they, uh, they all have nowadays. <laughs> That's a really all have. So how does technology play a part not only in the investigation but in trafficking of children and in child pro pornography? Ta you know, because like you said, everybody has these devices. Yes, they do. And uh, that, that is why we have a uh, computer forensics agent like uh, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Carter, because uh, every uh, kid is either logging on to the internet or using the internet to do homework. But uh, on the other side, we have predators right. now who are utilizing the internet to uh, get in touch with, uh, with these kids and exploit them. Uh, where they're creating fake, pa fake Facebook pages and uh, Twitter p accounts and so forth so that they can reach more kids. So it's not like long ago where we didn't have these devices like when you and I were growing up. Right. But now all the kids now have a smartphone or an iPhone and they have more reach, you know. Uh, and once, the, our motto is think before you post. Right. Think before you post because once you post it, you know, in, in, in our outreach uh, for iGuardian, we, we echo to the kids, once you post it, it's gone. It's out there. It's in, you know, uh, it, it's on the World Wide Web and you can't bring it back. Right. So, you know, we, uh, we try to um, echo that to the parents as well as the kids. All right. We stress that education is the key because yes. uh, Agent Thomas said that we can't arrest our way out of it. So education is the key to getting the word out there to let the kids know that once you send it, it's out there forever. And basically it's a world wide web. 
And when we say the web, we go out and we speak to them and say, someone in Russia can get your picture. Oh yeah, and Russia's someone been a problem. in yeah. Iran, yes. someone in the United States, in Timbuktu, will get your picture once you send it. So we try to stress it and think before you post. You don't want your family to see it. You don't want your teacher to see it. You don't want your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your mentors to see it. Don't take it, don't send it. All right, so you hear, think before you post. Don't take it, don't send it, nobody else will get it, or else apparently everybody else has access to it. And so, and if that, in like in the, the episode that we had, those videos were what got the father arrested, right? Because, I mean, and you leave them around, you never know, somebody can pick them up and pull them out. And then that starts to create evidence for an investigation. And has, I mean, I know that that's happened here. And mm -hmm. we've had cases where technology has been used to stop other predators and to stop perpetrators. Yes, and I, I want the listening audience to know, um, you know, these cases are taking place in the Virgin Islands. They are actually happening. And uh, I'd like to share uh, with the listening audience. I, you know, I remember, uh, two cases in particular that uh, we were involved with and the uh, first case was uh, an individual who spent 18 years in jail um, for uh, sexual uh, acts and that individual uh, moved to the island of St. Croix and he befriended uh, the grandparents of a youngster and uh, that individual uh, convince the grandparents to allow that individual to move in uh, with him. And he literally um, was committing sexual acts uh, with, with that individual. Um, at the end of the case, um, you know, we uh, prosecuted the individual and the judge uh, uh, levied 64 years uh, on that individual um, because I mean, it was very, it, some of the things that we found, you know, I can't even mention uh, because of how uh, harsh the case was. And I thought that would be the worst case that I saw in, in my career. And uh, I left to uh, go off to the mainland, uh, to, to work on the mainland, and came back home. And uh, as the resident agent in charge now for Homeland Security Investigations, uh, we, as soon as I got back, we encountered another case where uh, we had uh, young males in our community that were being victimized. And I, I want to stress to the listening audience that uh, this was a summer program. A summer program where, you know, uh, parents were sending their kids uh, and they trusted, you know, this individual, you know, to do the, the, the right thing. That individual, uh, you know, started um, uh, molesting uh, the kids and uh, videotaping, you know, uh, those uh, encounters. And um, we ended up uh, prosecuting that individual. Uh, that individual is, is currently doing uh, 20 years behind bars. Uh, but the, the, the sad thing is, you know, some of those victims were found in correctional institutions, and we just don't know how that encounter affected, you know, the the, mm -hmm. the, the outcome of uh, them ending up be, behind bars. But we, you know, we, we we definitely identified four victims on island. We think there are more, you know, uh, and that's the that's the part that that's very hurtful because these individual, you know, um. Uh, uh, kids are our most precious resource right. and you know to see this happening to the kids in our community it's very it's very sad and having kids you know it's uh, it's hard for me to, uh, to to see that but um, when we take these individuals you know uh, be before the court system to uh, prosecute them for what they have done you know um, it's 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 definitely something that we uh, we take very serious because uh, it's happening to the kids in our community and you know um, Dennis Carter here is, is, is our computer forensics agent and the amount of uh, images that you know he has to go through and, 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 and look at and you know get set up for court and so forth based on the 
uh, offenses that we uh, we review, it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I could imagine. Remember, it's a call-in show. Y'all are going to send messages afterwards, but they're here now, so talk to them. 773-3636. Um, so in... Uh, in uh, I, I, that whole looking at... The fact... That, okay, so for St. Croix... Well, let's see. You do the whole territory. So for territory cases, about how much, how many would you say they had last year? Because I mean, and I guess somebody wants to ask you a question, so let's let that ask you. Oh, I okay. guess not. Okay. And so, and uh, Silence Mix, hi. Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Hi. I'm calling you to the show. Uh huh. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, they mentioned the iGuardian program where they do outreach to the schools um, in the territory. Um, if I work at a school, an administrator at a school, and I wish to have a presentation um, presented to my children, uh, who would I get in contact with and, and how would I go about doing that? Okay, you, you can get in contact with, uh, with, with us. Uh, at my number, Eugene Thomas, is 340-244-3673. Again, that's 340-244-3673, and uh, we will uh, take your request. Um, again, we, we do it to public and private schools throughout the island. The last school we did was John H. Woodson. I think we did three to 400 students uh, at that school and the faculty. Thank you. Do you have the number? That's 244-3673. Okay? I got it. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, okay, so what can the community do to assist you with the investigations and with stopping child sexual assault? I mean, because you're talking about pictures and you're saying that he has all these photographs to go through. That means that they have to be a lot of cases, like I was asking before. Last year, about how many cases that did you have that were child sexual assault? Because I know you all do other things as well. Yes, um, and uh, as far as uh, child exploitation, I would say um, we we have been averaging uh, approximately three to four cases a year. Um, uh, the major cases that uh, that we get um, uh, involve the one that I uh, previously uh, mentioned, and I, it, you know I like to say that in that particular case. Uh, the attorney that worked that case, the computer forensics agent that worked that case, and we also have forensics interview specialists that um, you need those skills and in, skilled individuals to uh, interview the, the, the kids. All three said that that was the worst case that they've worked in their entire career. All three, and that's, we're just 84 square miles. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about forensics interview specialists that travel around the world Mm. interviewing kids that have been uh, exploited and they said that the case in St. Croix was the worst case that they have worked in their entire career from you know attorney forensics interview specialist and Dennis Carter here computer forensics agent so I don't even know how what we do with that I mean what do you do with that we can't be so small and hurt people so bad that people think that it's the worst that they've ever seen. Um, I nearly feel sorry for Agent Carter having to look at all of this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So can we stop making him have to look at stuff and just stop hurting people? If we could just do that, that would be great. Um, wow, um, I'm not sure what to say after that because these are federal cases. And how long does a take, case take to prepare? Because I know most people are saying it's just three cases, but three cases, with a time preparation of how long? We know that uh, the internet is very pervasive and storage is very large now. Right now I'm working a case where I have 22 devices that I have to go through. And some of these devices are like five terabyte large and it takes me probably like two or three days just to image one of those terabytes. 
So it goes through about several months before we can go through all the images, speak with the U.S. attorney, speak with the case agent, determine how many images we have, and then forward those images onto NetMEC to determine if we have known victims. If we have known victims, then those victims have to be notified and given a chance to speak at the sentencing if they so wish to do. So it takes approximately six months or so to get the case prepared and then probably a year before uh, either goes to trial or the individual pleads out. And uh, Agent Carter mentioned NECMIC, uh, that stands for the National uh, Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with uh, NECMIC, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, so we, we have a partnership with them. Awesome. And, um you said case cases, three cases, but those cases, each individual case could have more than one victim. Is that correct? Definitely, definitely. And and, and our uh, our main thing in in investigating these cases is identifying those victims and getting those victims the necessary help that they need. And that's where uh, in working with Shalene, that comes in very handy because you know we definitely need. Uh, individuals on the island who can uh, interview these individuals and actually communicate with them with that background uh, you know in in that area so it's very important you know um, to have those uh, crisis counselors uh, involved in these types of cases as usual uh, thank you so much um, so if you take six months to a year per case, and that's three cases, that's three cases too many. That's, right. that's three mm -hmm. cases too many anyway, because that means while they're working on one case, there's other cases that are happening, and we, we have to stop. I mean, and this is at the federal level. I mean, like we're not even talking about local child abuse and child sexual assault. We're talking about stuff that's on the federal level, so we really are not doing well. We have got to do better. But as usual, the half an hour is pretty much up. So I'm going to give you a chance to give out your numbers if there's anything that both of you want to say. I have a miracle question, though, um, which I ask everybody. So, you know, y'all are people, too. So <laughs> if you had one wish for the community when it came to a solution to this problem, what would it be? My, my wish to the community would be uh, to get very much involved with your, your kids uh, and what they're doing on the internet. Uh, speak to them about uh, the safety uh, of using the uh, internet and also uh, get involved with, with uh, those devices. I, I know a lot of uh, parents say, well, you know, that device belongs to the kid, but you as the, the parent that purchased that device, you know, you, you have access to put in certain parameters and there's a uh, there, there's a, a website, uh, NetSmarts, um, where you can go to to see how to, um, it, you know, employ some of those uh, safety, um, th th those safety practices for your kids. So I would say definitely get more involved with the kids and what they're doing on the internet and ask ask them questions because if we have individuals out here who are blending in in some of these summer programs and they're actually you know exploiting the kids and molesting the kids you know, speak to your kids and let them know that if, if they've been touched in any way you know they, you know they can communicate to you and confide in you you know as their parents right. you know so that we can identify what has happened who has violated the kids and and, and get those individuals uh, investigated all right I second what uh Agent uh, Thomas said, basically speak to your kids. He indicated that there was a website called NetSmarts. We refer to that website a lot for our, our information and to update our information. The uh, website is spelled N-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-Z dot org, NetSmarts dot org. It, it has a lot of resources for kids, teens, parents, teachers, law enforcement. Please, if you give your kid a device, make sure you look at the website to get some tips. I, I tell everyone that I get in contact with that I would like to work my way out of being a CFA and looking at those images. Uh, that's why we talk to the kids. If I could not see those images anymore, not know that our kids are being victimized, 
I would be very happy if I could just work my way up. All right, so there's the two wishes. Um, go ahead. I, I, I like also like to say we have a, a um, Homeland Security Investigations tip line. I want for the listening audience to take this number down. The number is 866-347-2422. Uh, so if you want to make an anonymous uh, call to let us know what's happening, though that call will be routed to us. Uh, if, if, if it's in the St. Croix area, we're going to get the, uh, the, the notification. I'll also like to say my counterpart, I know he's listening, Louis Penn is the resident agent in St. Thomas and St. John, and uh, the call will be routed to his area of responsibility uh, if, the, if there's an um, a offense that's taking place on that, on that island. So 866-347-2423, and that's our Homeland Security Investigations tip line. All right, so I Guardian. 340-244-3673, netsmarts.org, N-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-Z dot org, HSI tip line, 866-347-2423. You got it? We're going to post it all over our page so that you will have the information. Yeah. Um, and we are going to help because we need to help. I don't, and nobody needs to be looking at any terabyte worth of, of children are being hurt that that's just not fair to anybody and it's not fair to the children either and we do need to stop so we're out of time as usual so let's do the the wrap up next month is teen dating violence awareness month teenagers we know that you don't always have healthy relationships we know that because we're seeing the end results of it including the pictures that go around and the videos that are going around of you so next month is teen dating awareness month we're using the hashtag TDVAM the color is orange pay attention to, to the relationships that you're in and though the law says that the age of consent is 16 it's only if the person is up to five years older we really don't want you to start then anybody under 15 cannot legally consent I don't care how good it feels your body is going to respond that does not make it right because you're not able to handle the fact that sex produces children it doesn't produce parents and a lot of the fact that we don't have parenting is why we're having a lot of these things that are happening you know us passing on our children or not paying attention to the things that are going on with our children which is why we would have three cases in one year that take a year and a half to, pre to prepare for um, not only that our numbers are going up I must say thank you to everybody that has been calling in we've had a lot of people that have ca been calling in men thank you so much for standing up and letting me know that you all really did and have been hiding a lot of pain and we are sorry we are sorry that the focus has not been on you because the numbers are amazing um, amazing in the fact that I didn't know even though I've been doing this for a long time I didn't realize how many of our men and boys were hurt so thank you for tuning in to Silent Speak Secrets Reveal and the After Show thank you to Agent Thomas and Agent Carter the program is funded by a grant from Reliance a collaborative initiative to end sexual violence in one generation made possible through a commitment from the NFL, the National Football League. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official view of the NFL, though it should. If you need help, please call us at 773-9272. That's the Women's Coalition. If you need the iGuardian program, 340-244-3673. If you need the HSI tip line, 866 347 2423 and everybody needs to get on netsmarts.org n-e-t-s-m-a-r-t-z dot org thank you so much to you all you all were fantastic i know that you all don't really do radio but we do appreciate you doing it this time thank you for inviting us thank you for inviting us and uh, we would love to come back awesome that would work and so thank you to everybody and we will see you guys next week thanks troy Bye.